Hey guys, it's Katie, and I'm here today to do something a little bit different once again, because due to hiatus things, I asked for a bunch of suggestions, and I got a couple, and I'm going to kind of do a, like a weird mashup, and they are um, old reviews of books that I really enjoy, and hidden gems, and kind of underrated books. And I was given these suggestions by Justin from Triumphal Reads and Alex from Alex Black. And um, I don't know how I'm going to start this, but I'm really excited to do this because this isn't something that I do a ton of on my channel. But I've actually got quite a few books I want to talk about today. So let's just jump right into it. So I want to start off with the underrated books, and I've actually surprisingly got quite a few I want to talk about. I don't know how in-depth I'm going to go on them, but um, I've got quite a few that I want to mention. The first is a trilogy, but I've only read two of them, mostly because I only knew that, I only thought that there were two of them. I didn't know there was a third. They are Wise Child and Juniper by Monica Furlong. I read these books when I was a kid. My grandma actually read them to me. She had them and we read them together. And they're really, really great books here. Just let me, let me show you the covers first because I think the covers are lovely. There's Wise Child, and here's Juniper. Now, if I remember correctly, Juniper is technically the prequel to this, but you should read this before you read this. I'm pretty sure that's how I am, how it's supposed to be done. But I'm just going to read you a brief summary about what Wise Child is about so you kind of get a little gist as to what it's about. But it says... In a remote Scottish village, a girl called Wise Child is abandoned by her parents and taken in by Juniper, a sorceress. Under Juniper's kind but stern tutelage, Wise Child thrives. She learns reading, herbal lore, and even the beginnings of magic. Then Wise Child's natural mother, the Black Witch Maeve, reappears, offering the girl a life of ease and luxury. Forced to choose between Maeve and Juniper, Wise Child comes to discover both her true loyalties and her growing supernatural powers. By this time, though, Maeve's evil magic, a mysterious plague, and the fears of superstitious villagers combine to place Wise Child and Juniper in what may be inescapable danger. And I just remember loving these books. I read them so quickly. Well, actually, I read them with my grandmother so quickly. And I really, really enjoyed them, and I can't help but recommend that you guys check them out. Then the next underrated book that I want to talk about is My Father's Dragon, and I don't know the author, but it's a lovely children's story about a young boy, I believe, who goes on a journey to this place called Tangerine Island. One of his friends has gone missing, I believe. And so he's going to try and investigate and find out what happened to his friend. And he discovers all of these different creatures and all of these different um, animals on this island. And ultimately he comes to meet this dragon. And um, it's just kind of about his, it's just kind of like this cute little whimsical book. And I don't really know what more to tell you than that, but it's absolutely lovely. And it's full of all these gorgeous illustrations and things. If I have it, but I don't know where it is, otherwise I'd show you. But it's just really lovely. And I am going to definitely recommend picking that one up. Last one, the last like hidden gem slash underrated book I want to talk to you about is Catalina's Riddle by Stephen Saylor. Stephen Saylor is honestly just a really, really underappreciated author, I think, just in general. He writes a lot of um, murder mystery novels and that take place in ancient Rome, and they're just so well done. It's like historical fiction meets murder mystery combined into one thing, and it's just so good and Catalina's Riddle is the first one I read in his Sub Rosa series which is the one that follows Gordianus the Finder and in this one it takes place around the time of the um, Catiline versus Cicero orations and there's just like this murder that happens in between and Catiline is the one that has ultimately implicated 
and it's up to Gordianus to try and like take care of it. And one reason I love the whole thing is because it sheds Catiline in such a different light than Cicero does. I mean, Cicero, Cicero is known for his orations for a reason, and um, there's a reason that he is not so well liked. And I actually am in the minority, maybe, in that I am not a huge Cicero fan. I find him to be so irritating, but I also enjoy him because of his oration style. I mean, like, it's just this constant battle with me and Cicero. Um, but Catiline, because of this book and just learning about him the way that I did in my high school Latin class, I have a very deep appreciation and understanding of him. And um, I don't know, I just really liked that light, but also just the riddle and the mystery in that specific book is just lovely. I really like Stephen Saylor's other books as well, the few that I've read, but, I, but Catalina's Riddle will always be one of my favorites, and honestly, it is still relevant to today, and it is so funny in parts, and just, just, I love it a lot. And I'm not going to tell you the riddle and the answer to the riddle, because I want you to read and figure it all out yourself, and also laugh in the process, because... As I said, it is very, very relevant to today. Now moving on to a book that I kind of think everyone should read because that was another thing that was suggested to me by Linda from Linda's World of Books, kind of talking about some books that I think everyone should read. I've talked a bit about this topic in several other videos. I don't even know which ones anymore. It might be my classics, like why I love the classics video or something. But this one in particular, I felt like I needed to add into this, and I'm going to go into a little bit more depth on it. And that is Just Mercy, a story of mercy and redemption by Brian Stevenson. This book changed the way I see a lot of things. Basically what it's about, if you don't know, is it's a memoir of Brian Stevenson's um, experiences in um, dealing with uh, death row cases, particularly down south in Alabama. And he gives us an inside look into that whole process and that whole system and pr primarily focuses on minorities. But it is absolutely fascinating. It is very eye-opening and it is incredibly difficult to read at a lot of times. But I think it's important for people to read because there are a lot of misconceptions about death row and about the legal system. And this book does a spectacular job of clearing up all of that and explaining things and going into depth about um, how a lot of things have come into place since then, like using DNA evidence and um, I don't know, just there's just a whole bunch of stuff. And by reading this book, it gives you a closer look at Throw and talks about things that we don't necessarily hear. I mean, on the news, we get one story, and it's usually, you know, the side that is in support of death row. Um, but this gives you the other side of things, and I really liked that because it's not something that you see every day. It's not something you necessarily think about all the time, and it's just so well done. And... Um, it is, but it is incredibly emotional, so tread carefully if you're, like, triggered or anything before going in because it does take a lot out of you in a lot of different ways. It discusses, like, hard topics like, as I said, death, but it also talks about things like rape and uh, pregnancy while incarcerated and a lot of different things like that. Um, it talks about underage incarceration as well and um just but it is all through the lens of brian stevenson's experiences and i just definitely think it's one book that everyone should read and understand that there are there's always more than one side to the story and what we think and what we are what what filter we are given is not always the right thing or the or even the truthful thing so for that purpose i think everyone should read that book and the last thing that I want to do in this video is do a review of this incredibly wonderful young adult 
fantasy slash sci-fi series called the Young Wizard series by Diane Duane. It is an older series, but the author has actually gone through so much in order to revamp the series to make it current because it's one of those series that you can do that with. Um, basically what it follows is these two, primarily follows these two young people, Nita Callahan and Kit Rodriguez, as they embark on their ordeal, which I'll talk about briefly in a minute, to become a wizard. The way that Nita in particular, because she's technically our primary main character, she goes to the library, she's an avid reader, and one day she just picks up one of those, you know, so you want to be. And so this one was, so you want to be a wizard. And so she picks it up and um, she takes it out of the library and she takes it home. And when she opens the book, it has this oath inside. And you, when you take the oath, it is a binding contract, basically. It's not something that you can just get out of. It's not something that you just take for fun lightly. When you read the contract out loud, you are agreeing to embark on this, I guess you call it a quest, but it's kind of like a trial in order to prove that you're worthy. And so Nita takes the oath and then she's just learning all about wizardry, which is done in such a unique way, comes to you in multiple different ways. Some people have it memorized, depending on parts of the world. Um, a lot of people get it in book form. Anita's sister, who ultimately comes up in the series later, gets it in computer form. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely wonderful. And um, so when she's, you know, figuring out speech things, she meets Kit, who is just a boy who goes to her school and they end up going on this trial together because they every every wizard's trial is to fight against this power called the lone one and the lone one is basically just i guess you could call him like evil in the universe but it's like more complicated than that because he's actually quite morally gray in a lot of ways he's a it's just bad evil sadness whatever like bad feeling or evil that you come across in the world, the lone one is usually behind it. And so basically, Nita and Kit go on this crazy trial and they pass. And from that point on, they're, you know, they go on all these different kinds of things. Technically, they're not supposed to tell their parents, but ultimately they do at one point or another for multiple, multiple reasons. But, um... They go on all these kinds of quests and it's all over the world and sometimes even intergalactic and it's just such a fun and lovely series so i'm just going to kind of break it down for you guys um like i usually do so talking a little bit about the writing the writing is very simplistic you know typically i don't pay too much attention to it because it's just not something that i gravitate towards when reading a book fine next talking a little bit about the plot the plot of the overarching series is definitely really interesting but, but i mean it's technically technically you don't have to read it in order but i highly recommend that you do because you'll pick up on a lot of things better but um it's split into as this it's 10 books so far the author is still writing them book 11 will be out who knows when but i do know that diane duane is still writing it um but those 10 books follow different events and things um the first book you're going to want to start with is so you want to be a wizard logically it introduces you to the world and to everything so definitely you're going to want to start there um, and each deep book details with a, a specific plot. Some are better than others, as always, with pretty much every series you're going to read. I'm not going to go into depth on each book because that would take a really long time. And two, it would spoil you in some way, shape, or form. So I'm just going to not do that. But if you're interested to know more, let, leave a comment down below or come talk to me on Twitter and I will gladly talk to you about it some more 
But though, as I said, the overarching plot is definitely really interesting. It holds your interest. I really enjoyed it, enjoy it for the most part. Um, I mean, we have things as I said before, where they're on Earth, where they're in an alternate alternate dimension, whether they are in another country, because Nita goes to Ireland at one point, which I loved that book. A lot of people don't love it, but I personally loved that book. Um, then they had kind of an exchange program book where um, some aliens came to Earth and the Earth people went to alien planets. And it was like a vacation kind of thing, and it was just lovely. We got to meet some great new characters. We have some under the sea adventures. We have a Mars adventure, which is, you know, a questionable book. It's not my favorite. And I mean, we have a, a tournament book. I mean, it's just basically anything you can think of that is like sci fi, fantasy, space, or things like super good. So the plot is interesting depending on the book. Then let's talk a little bit about the world building. The world building of these books is really, really good. I love the world building so much. Um, it's really what drew my attention to the books in the first place. It's not, these are books that are, I haven't really read something like this before. The creativity that has gone into something like this is really, really well done. You can, like, if you follow Diane Duane on Twitter or on her blog or whatever, you learn that she's, like, super into the space thing. So she loves Star Trek and Star Wars and all of these things. Because, I mean, she's technically started writing these books, I think, in the 80s. And as I said, she's since upgraded them to the new millennium editions I think is what they're called and those are the ones that I read and um yeah just the world building as I said is so strong and so good um and each book builds on that world building too so it's not just like oh here's this world building and it's done no it's constantly growing with each book and I love that so much because that's that's a great thing about these books is they they expand and contract depending on where we are in the universe and what's going on at the time and it's just it's it's so good just highly highly recommend and then the last thing I'm going to talk about are the characters so there are as I said, our main two characters are Kit and Nita. Nita is technically our main protagonist of all protagonists, but Kit is just as much of a protagonist as Nita is, and their dynamic is just lovely. Their friendship is so strong and so good, and they evolve as the books goes on as well, because when the books start, I think they're, what, 10? 11 don't quote me on that but they're they're pretty youngish and then as the, as time goes on things happen later um but then another character that is heavily integral to these stories is nita's sister darine i love darine so much she is everything like she's just so snarky and lovely and I just really enjoy her and then some of the other characters we meet later they become kind of more and more integral and I really love them as well in some ways more than the main characters themselves because just the way that these books are written you really get to know the side characters just as well as the main characters and it's just it's just fun and I'm a fan I'm a huge fan of like the characters of this book but something else you should know is these characters are super diverse I mean very diverse um I don't remember Nita but Kit is has a Mexican Hispanic background and that's featured in the books in some way shape or form then we get aliens from all over, and I mean all over. Um, but then we also have like this sub category of books that is dedicated to kind of the animal side of wizardry, wizardry because there is like a whole cat universe, I think, 
but then there's also there's also a dog universe too and there is a dog character in these books that literally will steal your heart i adore this dog with my whole being but then we also get some um diversity with wizards abroad but then we also have a i believe he's autistic an autistic wizard which is really really interesting i didn't love the book that we were introduced to him in but the fact that we get it at all in a book was just mind-blowing it's just so good and they also deal with um, things like love and loss and heartbreak and just it deals with a lot of really great issues that I feel like a lot of fantasy and sci-fi don't really delve into a whole lot but I'm really really a fan of the characters they're just so well developed and diverse as I said and just I love everything about them just all of all of it it's so good but anyway that's all I've got for this hidden gem old review underrated books every and books everyone should read hodgepodge video and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'm curious to know if you guys have read or heard of any of these before or if after this video you're definitely interested in checking them out a little bit further to decide if there's something that you actually want to read but um, I'm definitely curious to know so let me know down below in the comments or come over to my Twitter at, which is at a sea of tomes so we can chat about it some more because I want to know all of the things. But other than that, you guys know the drill. As I said before, I have both of my social media links down below. You already know a little bit about my Twitter, but I also have a Goodreads, which is linked down below, and you can come over there and see what I'm reading and check out my progress and see my general thoughts and things on it before I come and scream at you about it over here. But other than that, I'll catch you later with another video soon. Bye.